Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. We have Mary Wilson joining us because we're talking about the Rome Plow. And I gotta be honest, so doing a little research into, into the guys who, into what their job was, no thanks. Yeah. Going into unexplored <laughs> portions of the jungle to clear it out to hope that a helicopter, etc., could land there, that right. sounds dangerous. It seemed intense. And I, uh, during my research for it, I was reading a lot of like personal stories because mm -hmm. uh, they have like all these blogs where they like talk back and forth to reconnect. And like there were stories of them like driving over landmines and this like holding up and people being okay. And I was like, wow, this is just such a little vehicle for that to happen. No kidding. It, it was intense. Yeah. So. And then what do you do? You drove over a landmine, you're wa do you just wave up at the helicopter? It's like, hey, <laughs> yeah. I need a hand here. <laughs> yeah, so definitely not, not a job that I would have wanted. But let's go over some of the, the functions of the model. I can see that you know, we've got some printed elements. Obviously, there's that winch on the back. But the, the, I think the thing that stands out the most is that that shovel is, is sitting at an angle and it's got the, the scoop or whatever you call that little pr uh, jutting thing out on one side. Yeah, the blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the iconic Rome plow uh, blade that really makes it what it is. Otherwise, it's just, you know, an average bulldozer. Sure. So very important to capture that in there. <laughs> well, in, in capturing in just any kind of angles like that that's not symmetrical in a model, you know, Lego's not necessarily right. like made for that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. Um, but other than that, this, this can move up and down. It's not quite posable, but if you're putting it in a mock, like maybe this is ripping into a tree and mm -hmm. it very easily can go up to whatever angle you need or, you know, playability for mm -hmm. it. Um, but other than that, so yeah, we've got the winch in the back. This unravels and it takes a while to put back on. So I love the printed the element back there too. Now that we just doze, I saw that on a few of the vehicles, uh, which I think is pretty funny. Um, and then, yeah, so we've got like the other, the other printed elements of the stars on either side. Mm -hmm. We've got that printed figure that mm -hmm. sits in the cab. And this is honestly like pretty easy access. You can just like flip this open. Oh, sweet. So you can uh, put your minifig right in there and then take them out whenever you need to. Uh, and then that just kind of swings back down. How did the cab configuration for this bad boy come together? Because I know especially with, with bulldozers or even just like, you know, you've seen the weasel, etc. You've got a lot going on in a really, really small space. Yeah. Where do you, as a designer, where do you start? Do you just kind of get lucky that it all comes together? Or do you kind of have to know that like, if I begin this way, it'll, it'll leave me more room to add these kind of funky angles? Yeah, so... Honestly, when I started building this and I thought it was a larger scale than it was because normally I look for a blueprint, but there wasn't something like that for this. Mm -hmm. So I started, I was like, I was like, okay, there's a kind of a cage around it. It's like this box. And then I like started measuring out the details and like figuring out the actual length of this. And I was like, oh, it's so much smaller. Like mm -hmm. it <laughs> ended up being like a very, like very, very small. I don't have any space to do anything. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so I was, at first I was like focusing on details that wasn't ended up like actually putting it in there because mm -hmm. of like there's like grills on the side sometimes it changes um and so i started just with like the square and like trying to get that the exact uh, length which was i mean not great because it ended up being an odd number of studs mm -hmm. which is always just another thing to deal with brutal yep <laughs> um, but then looking more there are a lot of really good detailed shots of the interior of this and seeing um like where the lever is and where the mid where where the actual operator would sit mm -hmm. um and how the like this part of the tractor like extended far back in there so after i got this square in there i was like i have to build this like tractor engine next sure because okay. it's really integrated mm -hmm. I suppose um, so after that then it all just kind of came together mm -hmm. so it wasn't necessarily like build the cab and like fit the minifig in it was more like this is the size it has to be mm -hmm. and then we got to build the tractor that the whole plow is so. yeah that it's almost like kind of encompassing like you said it interfaces and then you've got to work it into the chassis yeah and so how did you how did you build the chassis knowing that you've also got to fit this shovel on the front yeah <laughs> Um, so it also has this bar in front of the treads, and I'm assuming that's to stop um, material to get in there. So yeah, right. So you can keep going. So it was interesting trying to like get the right distance away for for this from this to have space for the the treads to still move. So it can roll. So yeah. So it can roll, and then to have this come off the side of it. So I still wanted it to be able to move, which was something that. At first I was like looking at Technic pieces, but they were all too big and mm -hmm. like 
all that kind of stuff. So this is like a really sturdy base down here. Um, and this basically I was just like, okay, this tractor is going to sit here and these treads have to be this far apart. And it ended up being like, I mean, it was obviously designed by someone who knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. and, and so the ratios all just kind of worked out, even while shrinking it to such a small scale. Um, just in general, like this, I was really excited to build this because it was different from a tank. And I also had just gotten done working on all the trains. And I was like, sure. let's build something different. Yeah, right. First of all, something mine. Second something of all, mine. something new. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really... I was just kind of in a flow when I was building this, so cool. I think I think it ended up really well, just like fitting together as I was adding each section on. Sweet. Well, I think people are looking forward to, to the designers. That's for the PT seventy six too, and I'd say the Rome Pod. You've definitely hit your stride here as a, as a designer, <laughs> Brick Mania, because this is a cool and like you're saying, a, a really really unique model. So that's awesome. Any other features, etc. You want to go over with it? Um, I think I think that was it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Well, like she said, it does come with this awesome custom minifigure. So now let's turn things over to Landon and hear a little bit more about the figure included with this kit. Okay, so turn over to the minifig. Color shifting. New yes. 3D printed element. Let's dive in. Awesome, yes. Color shifting, uh, again, I'm loving how this uh, we're capturing this uh, olive drab color. Um, so we're, we're opting for a base substrate color of dark uh, bluish gray and then we're color shifting to this olive color. Again, it's not just blasting over this Lego, it's actually tinting it, kind of like a stage lighting or something. It's, sure, it's a little bit you're of working a with the existing color. Yeah, so the majority of what you're seeing is actually the Lego color showing through. There's actually a very minimal amount of ink on this compared to something, let's say, like this, uh, um, I don't know, maybe the, the vest, right? That's also olive, but that I opted to do quite a bit more um, primer underneath of it. Got it. So I'm just trying to get as many, there's a lot of different shades of olive. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, every, no every country seems to have their own little, like, this is our olive drab. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and me are wearing Both olive wearing. drab pants right now, and they're probably still different, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, yeah. Right. Um, so, so, you know, it's been, it's been fun to try and, try and match the historically accurate colors. Uh, gets even more complicated. The sun also fades fabric, right? right. <laughs> No. So, oh, and it's, it gets even more complicated. Uh, they don't always get their dye batches the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, the fabrics receive dye differently. It's just everything changes the color. So uh, it's been fun and kind of maddening to right. try and get these, capture these colors. Um, anyway, um, flak jacket. Um, you know, this guy's, he's, he's, he's pushing around dirt. He's in the field. He's dirty. He's grimy. He's bored. He's... He's probably annoyed. I'm trying to capture that kind of frustrated mechanic. Mechanic. I look. love that. It's just like really not impressed. Um, <laughs> if I don't this know. thing breaks one more time, maybe someone's been in a, in a similar <laughs> position to this. Hopefully, you can relate to this like not impressed mm -hmm. minifigure right now. Um, I'm toying around with some different like griminess on his face because mm -hmm. again, pushing on dirt. He's probably kicking up huge clouds of dust. Um, you know, he's got a little bit of grime on his face. Uh, so that's that's what I was going for with that. Uh, and then finally, the awesome all new 3D printed um, field cap there. That's the, the hot weather field cap. Uh, it's, it's, it's essentially a, a baseball cap. Uh, and I believe there's like an, like a, an internal stiffener of some sort mm -hmm. to create like a little front panel. So it, at a glance, yeah, it's just a baseball cap, but I thought, I thought that that specific one um, was iconic enough that it warranted a, a, a brand new 3D printed element. Because I mean, you'll, you'll see that like once you start seeing this this baseball cap you'll like see it in just tons of photographs well in the lego uh, baseball Vietnam. cap is that dome look and then the right. brim is huge. there's a few different ones yeah, that, would, that would have been close but right. this also lets us do it in this uh perfect like olive drab color as well mm -hmm. so very excited for that I'm, I'm loving that we're getting these new 3d printed elements out that kind of fill out all the gaps um and allow us to create these really sweet minifigures. Yeah, I agree. A really unique minifig to go uh, with with an equally unique kit. So, so an excellent addition. So that is the designer studio for the Rome Plow. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.